Hey Lacey, today we're looking at the Lincoln MKZ. This is the first vehicle in a four vehicle transformation from Lincoln that's happening over four years. The next vehicle will be the compact luxury crossover called MKC coming in the summer of 2014. This MKZ is selling really well. In fact, the hybrid version is actually selling even better than Lincoln expected. But let's be honest, Lincoln's going to have to do a lot of hard work to resurrect this once mighty American luxury brand. A big part of this upgrade is the fashion forward design that they hope will attract younger buyers, not the older crowd that traditionally purchased Lincoln's. Now what you notice right away with this car is the Lincoln waterfall grille that's been incorporated into this Ford Fusion base car. That's how they make it a Lincoln. What you get standard are LED projector headlamps and LED marker lights that make a statement. It's the back of the car that I'm not really sure about. The super clean and rather square rear deck lid and bumper frame with a full width tail light look modern, but the rest of the car has sweeping lines. The back is chunkier. One thing we really miss is a rear trunk release on the outside of the car. You have to use a key fob or the interior release. You do notice when you open the trunk, this is the spot they use for the hybrid battery pack, which limits the amount of trunk space. When you look inside, you immediately see that their target buyer is aimed at a young, tech-savvy professional. Now, front and center is the My Lincoln Touch System, which is exactly the same as the My Ford Touch System. Now, if Lincoln's going to be charging more for their vehicles, they're going to have to think of something different. For example, like Cadillac does with their Q system. Both the regular gas and the hybrid start at 37,460 and come nicely equipped. Many people will opt for the preferred package for 6100 so they get the huge panoramic sunroof, navigation, heated steering wheel and rear seats, backup camera, blind spot warning system and more. This is the package we have on this car and it's a good deal at just over 46000 for a loaded sedan. The Lexus ES Hybrid fully loaded is just over 53000 now, I'm not a big fan of the push button transmission. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind the buttons. It's just a little bit awkward, especially when you're trying to park and you go from reverse to drive a few times. Personally, I prefer a rotary dial like Jaguar uses, or call me old school, just a regular shifter in the center console. The rest of the center console is covered in hard plastic with sliding controls for heat and radio. The rest are touch sensitive. This MKZ is sold in three different configurations. There's the two liter EcoBoost front wheel drive. There's the 3.7 liter V6 with all wheel drive. And this car, which is the hybrid, it's got a two liter four cylinder engine and a hybrid system. Unfortunately, only the V6 has all wheel drive. The two liter EcoBoost turbo four cylinder is the same one used in the Range Rover Evoque and it pumps out 240 horsepower. The 3.7 liter V6 has 300 horsepower, and this 2 liter 4 cylinder matched with the hybrid system has a rather pokey 188 horsepower. The upside to this car, of course, is the fuel economy. It's rated at 4 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and the highway. Now, I've been on record as saying the Ford Lincoln hybrid system is one of the best, but invigorating, it's not. I find pulsing the throttle and getting into full EV mode is the best way to get good mileage. This is a cruiser. The whole setup is refined and muted, making the MKZ not as edgy as it looks. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the inside of this car. It's got this kind of futuristic spaceship look. The center console has got hard plastic. They've got accents on it that are meant to look like metal. Well, why don't they make them metal? Like you see with the new Mustang that's coming out, the pieces that look like aluminum are aluminum. Why can't they do the same thing with this premium product? It's a fancy Ford Fusion, that's all it is. And in my opinion, the Ford Fusion is probably a better buy. What's interesting is that Lincoln's biggest rivalry historically has been Cadillac, and these companies couldn't be further apart today. Cadillac has their award-winning CTS and their all-new ATS. These cars have been developed to take on all that the Germans can throw at them, and they've been quite successful and selling really well. This MKZ isn't going to get German car buyers excited. No, this car is more of a challenge for Lexus buyers or existing Lincoln owners, but the interior and styling isn't what older buyers want. The ride is smooth and rather soft, but throw this long car into a corner and the platform is very well planted and this sleek car handles rather well. 
Not like a Cadillac CTS, but not like the Lincolns of old either. It's a nice contrast to the two approaches. This MKZ does everything nicely. The brakes are solid and overall it's just a pleasure to drive. We'll tell you what our average fuel economy was at the end of the segment, but in the meantime, Zach, what are your thoughts on the hybrid MKZ? Well, first of all, I like the price. I think it's an attractive starting price for a luxury brand. I also like the fuel economy that you get in real world conditions. And I certainly like the effort that Lincoln is putting back into their brand. I've had a look at that MKC that's coming out later this year. And I think that is going to be a very attractive vehicle. I don't know who this car is appealing to. It's very futuristic. The exterior styling looks to me like a spaceship. It's, it's not going to appeal to the traditional older Lincoln buyer and the younger Lincoln buyer maybe you want something more dynamic like the Cadillac ATS or CTS. Then you get into the inside, it's got the My Ford Touch, My Lincoln Touch, which are exactly the same. The dashboard's the same. It really is just a fancy fusion. But Lacey, you like a lot of these things. Yeah, you know what, Zach? One of the things I absolutely love about this car is the exterior styling. I think it looks fantastic from both the front and back end. It's got a very smooth ride. There's adequate amount of space in the trunk, especially for a hybrid. And I really like how the dash looks. And especially the little cubby hole is a great place to hide your purse or your iPhone. So that does bring me to the downside. As much as I like how the dash looks, I'm not a fan of the push buttons. And it's just, call me old school, but I would just prefer some dials and knobs. And then, you know, I mentioned it earlier, but I really don't like that push button transmission. It's just a little Gimmicky. awkward. It's a yeah. big gimmicky, right? And that brings us to the economy. We teased you a little bit. The posted numbers are four liters per 100 kilometers, city and highway. Now we had four different people driving this, city and highway with different driving styles, and we got 6.7 liters per 100K. Now that's not four, but that's really good for a big car like this. But you know what, Zach? You can get the same fuel economy with a less expensive fusion hybrid. Looking for a luxury car? All the reviews are available at drivingtelevision.com.